previously on Board Repair Basics, I sabotaged the board that we are working on in order to demonstrate how a missing PP3V42 bus can completely disable the board with just one component being out of place. Now we've restored PP3V42, we've also got PP Bus G3 Hot back. However, we still don't have a green light on the charger, so now we're going to investigate why the charger won't light up. There he is. There's PP Bus G3 Hot at 12.6 volts. However, we still don't have a green light on the charger, so let's investigate why that is missing. So let's move aside. So the green light on the charger is called the one wire circuit. And that is basically, um, that is the circuit that allows the SFC to talk to the charger and check how much power is coming in. And we need the one wire circuit for the majority of these boards to work. So let's look that up on the schematic and see why it might be missing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a search for one wire. which is going to bring us over to this fella here. So this is right over where the MagSafe DC power jack is. And what this circuit does is it checks that the charger is ready to go. So um, it starts out over here. We go into the U6900 and the U6900 grabs the fifth pin, the adapter sense pin from the DC, from the DC in jack. And then it has a data line here called sys1 wire that goes to the SMC. So through this, it means that the SMC can talk to the charger and check how much power it can deliver and if it is ready to deliver power. So let's find out what's going on there. So firstly, in order for this to work, it needs power coming in from over here and then we need a connection to the actual DC jack. So the first thing we're going to ask is, is the U6900 actually turning on? Is it there? Is it working? So let's find the U6900 and see what his deal is. So back to the board. And we're going to search for U6900. Okay, so he's on the other side. Nope, the same side of the board we're on at the moment. And he's right up in the top left. So let's have a look at you. So by clicking on him, we can check the pins. So um, pin one, SMBC AC OK VCC is the power pin. So let's just confirm that. So pin one, SMBC AC OK VCC. So that is the power input to this chip, the VCC line. And it's going to provide power and get this thing to turn on and start chattering. So let's check pin one of the U6900 and see if there's any power there we should find PP3V42 there because that's what powers this circuit. So let's see if there's anything getting to that chip. Okay, so we've got to get right under the DC in jack up here. So we're gonna go probe on ground and pin one was in the bottom right. Yes, the bottom right. What do you say, my dude? You say nothing. So there is no power getting to this chip, which is why it's not turning on and why we have no green light. So what is going to, what is going to provide power to this chip? So in order to get power to here, we have to come out of the U6901. So again, we're following the circuit back and we're going to keep following it back until we find that power again. So the U6901 is a logic gate. And basically, it is going to turn on when it has two high signals. It's an AND gate. When it has A and B, you will get Y. Now, in this instance, A and B are actually tied together. They're tied to SMBC, AC, OK. And this signal comes from the SMC. That's just from the SMC saying we're ready to turn on. This chip itself is going to be powered from PP3V42. Now we know the PP3V42 is up, um, so we should have power coming in here. So let's check pin 5 of U6901 and we're going to see if it's actually turning on. So uh, let's search for you on the board. U6901.
Whoop. And very conveniently is on the other side of the board. So over we go. Uh, oh, and what's this? Okay, well, here is another one of my simulated liquid damages. U6901 is gone. It's not there. It's actually missing from the board because I took it off. Uh, however, let's do our checks because if you have a damaged U6901, which is what I'm trying to simulate here, we will find that there is actually power coming in. So the pin 1 of this chip is in the bottom right. So if we check the bottom right, we're going to go one pin on ground and check the bottom right. And there's PP3V42. It's a little bit low because I've got a really bad connection to this pad because it's really small. However, as you can see, there is voltage there. So there was power getting coming from PP3V42 to this circuit. But because we have a bad U6901, the power wasn't getting any further and into the one wire circuit. So let's replace our U6901 with the one that I took off and let's watch everything come back to life again. So we're going to disconnect and I'm going to come back in with a nice shiny new U6901. Now because this guy is a smaller, uh, a smaller device with more legs on it, I'm going to solder this on properly. So I'm just warming up my soldering iron and we're going to do a little bit of cleaning up on this thing and just put some fresh solder on there. So we're going to use a little bit of flux on the area and that's just going to make all the solder just flow nicely and make everything swim, which is what we want. And now I'm going to come in with just a little bit of solder and just tidy that area up. So we're just going to roll a solder blob around on that. There we go. And now those pads have got nice little cushions on them. So we've got a flat pad and it's got a bump of, a, a bump of solder on it. And that means that when I put, put the uh, device down on top of it, uh, the legs will actually have some solder blobs to sit in. So let's bring in U6901. See if I can put this on without dropping it. Now, because we have some flux on the board at the moment, that is going to help everything flow. So we should now see that this guy will want to sort of move into place on top of the solder on its own. But I need to be careful with the hot air here because if I come in too strong with the hot air, I'm just going to blow it all away. So I'm going to start out a little bit far and we're just going to heat him up gradually from a distance. Just going to nudge him in place. See, look, even just nudging him, he wanted to move there. Yep, he looks good, and I'm going to back away. And now the solder has dried again, we're now going to press down on top and reflow it again. And because I'm pressing down on top, it can't blow away. There we go, and back off again. And where I've been pressing down on that turn, that's going to make sure that it's going absolutely flat on the board. There we go. Turn the equipment back off again. Right, how much heat have we got there? Yeah, that's fine. Now, because we got in and out, we haven't got too much heat on the board. When you're doing soldering for extended amounts of time, you're going to heat up the whole board and you want to wait a while and just let the board cool down again. You don't really want to power everything on while it's all at 200 degrees. Um, so, yeah, right, let's move my soldering shield out of the way. And now we should find that when I plug in the MagSafe charger, we get a green light. Bam, there is our green light. It's beautiful. So we've now fixed the board. So to summarize, we, we sabotaged this, this board with two faults. The first fault was that we disconnected the input resistor to PP3V42. And that meant that PP3V42 did not power up which in turn 
meant that PPBus G3 Hot did not power up either. Then we also sabotaged the input AND gate for the one-wire circuit, which meant that the green light on the charger did not have any power supply, and it also meant that the SMC could not read the charger. So we then put the we then put the AND gate that I had removed back on the board, which then brought it back. So, how do these things relate to you guys? Well, notice that we're on the edge of the motherboard here. This is right at the back of the laptop, right next to that air vent, because our cooling fan is up here. And when water comes into the back of the laptop, this is the first place it's gonna go. So, when your water comes in, it's gonna corrode these guys, these guys, these guys, all along here. and if this guy, the PP3V42 input resistor, gets messed up, that's going to kill PP3V42. And if this guy gets messed up, that's going to kill our one-wire circuit. And then also, if this guy gets messed up, that's going to kill our display. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the next episodes. So, thank you very much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond to them all. And stay tuned for more videos in the future on board repair basics. Goodbye for now.